What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I just wanna start off by saying thanks for all the comments, the love, the likes. It's been uh, overwhelming lately, it's been awesome. So uh, thanks for following along with everything we're doing. Today, we are gonna build a shrinking stump. And yeah, there's a stump right there, but it is rotten. This thing was actually, I was saving it to make a shrinking stump. You can see my horrible attempt at uh, starting to make a bowl and then realizing how rotten this thing is. Like, it's made of marshmallows. This is something I've been thinking of for a while, is how to make a shrinking stump without having a hardwood stump. Like, what are your options? I know I've seen it before and I wish I knew exactly who it was so I could give them credit, but I've seen somebody make a shrinking stump out of dimensional lumber. And what I'd thought is um, use like a fence post, right? Get a treated fence post, an eight foot tall fence post, cut it up and make some sort of shrinking stump. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications, and let's get into the video. Okay, so I did a little shopping. I got one eight foot treated six by six fence post. I, I made all these pieces out of that one piece. So if the lumber is expensive right now for us Canadian, I think it was like 50 bucks for the one piece. But I mean, overall, it's probably not the worst. Um, the other thing I got was some one and a half inch by quarter inch flat bar. 
I've cut them into 15 and 3 8 inch long pieces. What these are going to be is essentially a strap to hold the top of the shrinking stump together. And uh, my whole plan here is to stack these in a two by three pattern. I've cut a couple short to be the half inch thick piece of nylon um, so that we can hammer out our wrinkles on this flat spot. And then we're gonna cut a bowl into the top of these four posts. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I've got some number 12 by four inch long screws. I'm gonna screw the crap out of this, hold it all together. And then these are gonna be bent. Actually, I'll show you a little picture I drew. I think you'll be able to understand it. Again, I'm using my little Today Let's Build book. This is my plan. So I've got my half inch thick piece of nylon here, and that's to uh, hammer out the wrinkles. Those wrinkles are what cut up my sandbag last time. So this is gonna, this is definitely gonna help with that. I think that if it was this, this wood and we were hammering out the wrinkles, we would probably damage the wood. That's why we've got the plastic there. And I don't remember where I've seen that before, but I've definitely seen that before using a piece of plastic. So using nylon, nylon grips better than Delrin or um, what's that other one that's really common what is it called? There's this really hard plastic that everybody uses. They even suggested for me to buy it because of how much cheaper it is. Nylon's not cheap, it's expensive, but uh, it has grip strength. So it'll hold the steel or the aluminum better than Delrin or I can't even think of what it is. You guys are all screaming at the, at the screens right now telling me what it is. But uh, anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw it all together and then we're gonna bend these pieces into little L brackets and they're gonna hold on to the corners. So this is gonna be basically here with this tab bent at a 90 degree. It's gonna come around the corner, be bent at another 90 degree. That way we'll be able to put bolts here and here, here and here, and that's essentially just gonna hug it and keep it all together so that as we're pounding steel or aluminum into the bowl here, those forces that are trying to spread it all out and destroy our freshly built shrinking stump will be met with quarter inch wide steel that will wrap it and hold it all together. This is all theoretical. I haven't built one of these, but I think this is gonna work out awesome. Years ago, I did, I did see it somewhere. I'm not sure if it was Sodak Big Joe on uh, like S-O-D-A-K, like South Dakota. Big Joe. He's a metal shaper slash tool maker. He makes wooden mallets and stuff. He's on Instagram. You should check him out really. Um, I don't know that he has YouTube, but if you're on Instagram, S-O-D-A-K Big Joe, and uh, you might be able to pick up some tips from him as well. He works with a lot of aluminum and uh, does an awesome job. So anyway, I wasn't sure if it was him. I did look on his uh, profile back a couple years to see if it was. It could still be him but uh, I got tired of looking. So anyway, let's get into this build. The first thing I'm gonna do now that these pieces are cut up and drilled is uh, we're gonna mark these out. I'll just get this out of the way. We're gonna mark these out for our bends. So referencing my drawing here, I've got one inch on each end to bend. So we'll mark that out first. If you didn't know, these are one inch wide, most of them. We're not looking for uber ridiculous accuracy here. It's just a strap that's gonna be holding it all together. So we've got our one inch brake points there, and then we have to flip this over because the brake is going the other way. And we will mark at five and a quarter inches plus one inch. So six and a quarter inches from the end. Get this on here. Six and a quarter. This is gonna be our corner. So I'm gonna take this over to the brake press. We'll do our bends. And then we'll start screwing that stump together. Come on. Okay. I'm lazy, so I'm gonna try and do them all at once. Okay. 
Okay, it looks pretty square. Because this has a single ram, like I built this brake press, and because it has a single ram in the center, when you're bending anything, it has to be centered, or else it's going to want to bend one side more than the other. Um, so the way that I fight that, if I was doing multiples, is that I would put these threaded stops down so that one side would stop and the other side would catch up if needed. But the other way to do it is just to let it release and then just adjust all the plates. You can see right now this one's bending more than the rest of these. So I'll just undo it a little bit and I'll just move these over a little. Like that. And then you'll see they will start to even out. See, now this one's going more than that one. It's a fight. It's a constant battle. Let's just not be lazy. We'll just do them one at a time, like nature intended. All right, so that is what I was talking about. These are gonna be perfect. Hopefully the measurements are right. Yeah, that's perfect. That is the plan right there. Yeah. So we need a little bit of hardware. Now we know what size bolt we need. It looks like about an inch and a half long bolt. Probably find that in the bolt bin. Same thing for this side, about an inch and a half. I guess we gotta start screwing these together. That'll be first before we get too ahead of ourselves. So I got these long, four inch long, number 12 screws. I'm just gonna start screwing these together. So we've kind of got it just tacked together. We can throw some more screws in it for strength, but it's pretty solid. So what I want to do now is, um, is throw this strap around it, find some bolts, clamp it up, and then we can start digging out the bowl in the top here. I'll show you a cool way to do that in a sec. So I found some bolts, a little mismatched, but we're going to do just fine. A few nylocks.
nice and solid. So I'm gonna show you this little disc here. I think this is kind of like a, like a wood carver's disc or somebody that makes grizzly bears out of tree trunks or something like that. This is just a super aggressive stamped steel disc that's got all these little teeth in it. And it's actually got a radius on it. I saw these on Amazon, so I picked up a couple and uh, I just thought it'd be perfect for carving out a bowl. So that's what I'm gonna use it for right now. We're just gonna make a single bowl in here. Like I've seen a lot of different shapes in shrinking stumps. There's not only just a single bowl, but guys make, um, you know, smooth transitions into kind of like a half a bowl that, you know, there's all kinds of different shapes. So you might wanna make two or three, or maybe even flip this thing over and carve a different shape in the bottom of it and add another one of these. Those are just ideas. But for now, we're just gonna make the bowl just for tuck shrinking, something that we can use the mother tucker hammer on and show you how much better a stump works than a sandbag for that type of shrinking. So I hope that this thing's gonna hold up. I'm gonna draw myself a circle here and get to grinding. This is a, a tool that I use for bead rolling, radiuses and stuff like that for marking things out. Everybody always asks me about them when I use them. I'm really bad at forgetting to mention the tools themselves. This is a Mittler Brothers made little pack. There's a, there's a few of these that they make and they're mostly for bead rolling. That's why it's a Jamie Jordan series thing. But I, I looked for them on the site the other day. I actually got these as a gift from a friend. If you look at the Mittler, Mittler Brothers website or Trick Tools or anybody that's a, a dealer for Mittler Brothers, um, just search up the Jamie Jordan series stuff and you'll find all kinds of bead rolling measuring tools. So this will be handy for us. We're just gonna make, make a circle. I think it's about the right size. Yeah, sure. Sure, why not? Yeah, we'll start with that. Okay, I'm just gonna take a piece of 80 grit and just kind of smooth it out a little bit. I just wanna add right now that like how perfect this is doesn't really matter. You're not trying to like get this shape perfectly imprinted on your metal. You're just wanting a void to hammer into to instigate that wrinkle that is the tuck for shrinking. So this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna sand it to make it pretty and uh, I probably put a little bit of linseed oil on it, seal it up a little. All right, well, I think that bowl is a perfect shape for now. Like I said, multiple shapes for multiple different things, but this will definitely get some good tucks started with those. What I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna take this off. 
I kind of wanted it clamped when we were grinding it for obvious reasons, but I'm going to take the bolts off, take this, yeah, I'm going to take it off right now and um, put some linseed oil on it. Actually, do you think I need to take it off? I guess it doesn't matter if I get a little oil on that, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is professional grade boiled linseed oil available at Home Depot right by the paint counter is where I got this. I just saw somebody else making a shrinking stump and they used it. I know next to zero things about wood and woodworking. So um, <laughs> I kind of trust anybody else that's already done it. What are you doing? You trying to help me right now? <laughs> Thank you. She just unwrapped this with her legs. Another video on how that happened. <laughs> Okay, so boiled linseed oil. There's probably a bunch that's going to go right through that hole. I can guarantee that. I wonder if I should stick something in there. Yeah. Maybe a little piece of tape. Hold on. She's asking if the hole in the bottom of this right here is going to uh, be an issue. Like, is that going to mark up what we're hammering? I suppose if you, if you slammed something, you know, right dead in the center there, then perhaps. But uh, mostly when we're using a shrinking stump like this, you're hitting along these edges and you're holding your metal and, and you're kind of hitting at an angle into there and, uh, and making your tucks. So this little hole in here isn't a big deal, but I just don't want to leak a bunch of linseed oil down there. So I'm going to just jam a piece of tape in the hole just so we're not leaking a bunch. All right, here we go. Look at this. Look at how nice that looks. Some rustic Pinterest eat your heart out stuff right here. Look at that. I'm not messy. I'm coloring in between the lines. The only reason I wanted to unwrap this is to uh, make sure that I don't get a bunch all over the steel there, but it's not going to be an issue. I'm really choked that I use this as the top piece because it's a different color. It's been treated. I was, you see me sanding it? I was trying to sand it off. The underside would have been better? Yeah. I don't know how much this stuff, how long this stuff takes to dry either. Five hours. Can't do your video now. Leave overnight. <laughs> 24 to 36 hours? <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. You know what that means, don't you? Do two coats at once? <laughs> do you could two coats at once? I don't know if it works that way. <laughs> Double up. 24 to 36 hours. This might be a two part episode because this takes 24 to 36 hours to, uh, to dry. I'm pretty sure that the shrinking stump still works even when it's wet, but this might be a long enough video. Anyway, we're going to put this top on anyway. Honestly, this, this protectant is more for like, if it's outside, right? Mm -hmm. Like if it's inside the shop, I don't think it matters a whole hell of a lot. Guaranteed somebody in the comments knows more than I do about this. So somebody will tell me what I did wrong. Looks nice though, doesn't it? Doesn't that look nice? It says that it's going to dry darker than what it is now. It says considerably darker. Okay. Well, I am going to probably do a second coat because why rush it? This thing's turning out pretty nice. So I think, um, I will wait almost as long as they want me to. <laughs> okay, uh, I just want to talk about this plastic for a second. I'm not sure if I mentioned where I got it from. Did I? No? Okay. So there's some guys at home, guys and girls at home that are uh, asking about where to buy this nylon. And uh, nylon actually isn't really sold in a whole bunch of places. So you probably have to get it from a plastics company. The plastics company that I deal with and I do ship worldwide, I believe, is called Robertson Plastics. I do believe they also have multiple locations. So that's where I got the nylon two inch round rod for making the mother tucker hammer on the ends. And that's where I also got this sheet. They have everything. They have um, all kinds of different plastics, acrylics, anything that's not metal, but shaped like metal. This is just half inch nylon. It is more than double the cost of, you know, other plastics. It's definitely not cheap. I don't know why that is, but for whatever reason it is, but nylon is the best as far as I know from my research is that the grip strength of nylon to metal is awesome. 
and a lot of those other plastics like Delrin or like the one that I can't think of the freaking name of yet, <laughs> they are meant to slide. Teflon's one of them, Delrin, and there's one other one. It's, uh, it's abbreviated, help me out. But uh, those ones are meant for slippery scenarios. Like that's bolted on the side of the bulkhead of a steel garbage compactor and it slides back and forth all day and they, they're wear resistant and they're meant to slide. This stuff is grippy and that's why you pay up for the nylon. Once again, like the mother Tucker hammer, there's a bunch of guys that don't have lathes or they don't have access to this stuff. And so I do wanna tailor some of our content and our business to that. Like, I think it'd be really cool if this works out well, which I think it really will, to sell you guys like the pieces to make this shrinking stump. You know, it's not always easy to buy small quantities, especially of the harder to find materials like nylon. So I think it'd be cool if I bought a large quantity, cut them all up, and you could have the pieces to make this at home. Anyway, it's something I'm thinking about. I'm busy with planishing hammers and, and other stuff, so it's not gonna be right away, but uh, I think it would be cool to be able to do that. So I countersunk these bits of hardware so that they are below flush. And there we go. So that is the shrinking stump I've always wanted to try making. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work really well. I know I've seen it somewhere before. Yeah, finally, a shrinking stump that's not rotten. <laughs> but that is going to be it for this episode of Make It Custom. I do really appreciate all you guys out there. The channel's growing. Christina and I are really enjoying what we're doing, making content for you guys, as well as building tools. And we do still plan on having classes later. Um, I will give you guys an update on the Excalibur van soon. There are some new developments there, as well as hop back on Christina's Cadillac and the Model A. So these things are all coming, not as quickly as I had hoped, because things take time. The one other thing that I wanted to talk about before we go is, um, I saw it mentioned in the comments, and I do agree with this, that I do not mention the other channels enough that I've learned a great deal of things from. So one of the channels you've heard me mention before is Pro Shaper. That's Ray Shaleen. He's an excellent, excellent expert metal shaper. He comes from a metal shaping family. His family has been doing coach building for a long time. And so he's a wealth of knowledge. So Pro Shaper on YouTube, great channel. Lazzy is another great channel. Who else is awesome for that? Ron Covell, I don't watch a ton of his stuff, but if there's something specific I'm looking for, I, like, I'll click it if he's, got, if he's got a video on it, I'll click it because he's also a, an excellent metal shaper. So yeah, I just want to give a shout out to those channels because I really appreciate their content. I've learned a lot from them. I don't have a whole lot of mentors locally, um, so I consider all the information that I find online and from talking to people on social media, et cetera, or in person, that is my mentorship. That is where I'm absorbing information from. I didn't go to school for this. The only real school that I went to was for welding. That was back in high school. So everything else can be learned as long as you're willing to look for the information. And that is what I'm trying to do with this channel as well, is just provide the tidbits of information, the little nuggets, if you will, those little aha moments that I've had kind of over time that uh, has really kind of jumped me ahead in metal shaping and uh, metal fabrication. So once again, thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. We appreciate y'all and we'll see you next time. The next video will be with this, with the mother Tucker hammer and we'll do some tuck shrinking. Have a good one, everybody.